Welcome to this episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with my buddy, Tim Busy, and uh, wait and hang out because we have a really cool guest uh, that's going to be joining us, Mr. Marcus Ogden, um, and, uh, and he's a rock star, so he's got a lot of great things to talk about, but uh, let's talk about how we're doing. Whether you care or not, we're going to do this, our show. So, Tim, how are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing good, brother. I'm doing good, brother. Just What's happening? Adjusting dur during these turbulent times and, uh, you know, in, in a time of where people are fearful, just staying in the word and in God's promise and just understanding who's in control of this situation. So, I'm doing good, my man. How are you? Well, uh, I see you're wearing your rocking a hat. I'm rocking a hat. I've got the COVID hair, you know. <laughs> so, I said, hey, man, yeah, yeah, you're worse than I am. That's good. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, adapting, you know, when, when this first came out and my calendar, I'm sure just like yours, uh, my calendar was completely booked. I was going from school to school. I was going to be a principal of a day. I'm taking a group of kids to the federal reserve and all of these fantastic things were, were, were happening. That I was looking forward to. And for one by one, uh, within a couple of days, my calendar went from booked to clear and, right. You know, at first, it was a little stressful. You know, when you're running a company and you're 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 looking forward to speaking with kids, and that's part of uh, your marketing and all of that. Uh, to then have it taken off, and, and how the heck are we going to do this? And you mentioned it. It was like instead of feeling stressful and and, and, and having anxiety, I, there, it was like a sense of peace. Yep. It was like I just like took a deep breath and I just said. Huh. And, I, and then, of course, I'm on social media because I'm uh, pubbing what we're doing and all that type of thing. And I'm seeing all these, oh, my gosh, my kids are going to be home. And, oh, my gosh, the lines are out the door for food. And now I can't go out and eat. And, oh, the gyms are closed. In my head, I was thinking, good. How cool is it your kids are going to be home? I used to sit around right, every right. night. We had dinner at the table. You know, I was a kid right, of the right. Mom made dinner. We ate at the table. It, 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 and, and that's what we did. I started thinking, wow, families are going to eat at home together. Good. You're going to eat healthy. You're not going to be eating out. You're going to actually buy groceries and eat healthy. That's, that's good. And all you know, those treadmills, all those things that are holding your clothes, well, now you're going to actually use them. Is right. It? You know, the projects around, I started thinking about all these great things. And, and then the, the solution I came to is, you know, um, people talk about, the, the, the going back to normal and the old normal and the old normal wasn't working. No, it just no. wasn't working. And in my opinion, good, bad, or indifferent politics, COVID, blah, 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 you know, God just said, you all need to slow down. You all need to slow down and recognize what's important. It's not the cars. It's not the house. It's your family. It's your loved ones. It's you and taking care of you, we've neglected right. ourselves. We're obese, right. we're out of shape, we're diabetes, we're heart attacks, walk, you know, and, and, and that, focus on you. And if you haven't taken advantage of this time to do that, boy, what a shame. What a shame. Because Very we're true. all in the same boat. You're not being lazy. It's like God put the whole world on pause. <laughs> you know? So what else are you going to do? Sit around and complain and, and figure out whose fault it was? Or, or just do it. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Right. No, no just I, I love that. I love it. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. It's so true. I mean, you got to find the silver lining. You know, there's there's always a positive in every story. You know, and right. uh, you got to search and you got to you got to ask yourself and yeah, look in the mirror and ask yourself what you've been doing lately and and where can yeah. I adjust and where can I get better? You know, so I know what, you work a better time than now. I mean, everybody's got all the time in the world, so don't. Don't say you don't if you uh, if you've always said oh, I've been too busy. Well, I mean that's not an excuse anymore. So yeah, and you know as quickly as it came on, it's it's gonna seem it won't be as quick coming back out, uh, but but it will uh, it will appear that way because how quick time goes by and you know it'd be a shame six months from now you, you sit there and you're in the same predicament that you were when you went into this and you didn't take advantage of the opportunity to to fix some things. Right. Uh, but hey, Tim, I know you work a lot with kids, like you know, like kids, and yeah, so yeah. what 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 are what are they feeling, and what are you sharing with them? Uh, I mean, they're they're it's crazy that kids are talking. You know, my high school students are saying COVID nineteen was the one virus that'll make you miss school. So you know, yeah, yeah. just having that that perspective where it's like you know, understanding how grateful you are just to even be able to have that opportunity to go to school. Um, yeah. A lot of them are bummed, you know, not being able to play team sports and everything right now. But 
just just working on the little things, you know, making your bed every single morning, like you were talking about eating healthier, making those little decisions. So when we do go back to normal or, you know, return to school and having the seasons open back up that we can be prepared and have this new appreciation and this new sense of gratitude that when we do go back, it's, we saw how fast things, like you said, our schedules were full and they were taken away. So now mm-hmm. going back with this new perspective and uh, this new lens on life, it's, it's, it's something that, that could be special if you really take the right approach from it. So, you know, you just said the word lens and I, and I have to be a, a full, full transparency and, and full disclosure. I, I, I stole your choose your lens yeah. um, saying yeah. I actually did a live stream with that as the title because I think it's brilliant. I love uh, it. That, I love uh, it. You know, lens on life, baby. Lens on life. What lens yeah. are you looking through? What lens are you looking through? And, you know, so, uh, you know, let's talk about a little bit about um, all the things out there about making fun of people buying toilet paper or buying what it was, a water, you know, right. I got caught up in it. I got yeah. caught up in it because I was looking at that situation through my lens, meaning what I would do. Mm-hmm. And I was putting myself on them. So, right. you know, yeah, I wouldn't go buy toilet paper or, or, or water because, well, first of all, you know, it's just not that kind of a thing, but it doesn't mean what they were doing was wrong. That's how they were fearing. And that's what they needed to do to, to feel better about the situation. Just because I wouldn't, doesn't mean they're wrong it doesn't mean i should make fun of them that's what they needed and so if you choose your lens and you exchange your lens on how you would do stuff putting you on other people and chose a lens of empathy and understanding and going hey maybe that's just what they need you know what it's so much easier to 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 not think about it (laughs) right worry what you're doing man i got my toilet paper and i got my water you know and i'm and i'm going to do things differently and because just like i wouldn't want them looking at me judging me and how I'm coping with this. And, right, and if right. you go then across the board, you know, it's just, once again, it's kind of a lesson learned. You know, when people are like, well, they didn't cry enough at the funeral. And, you know, and, or, you know, they're, they're not mourning the right way or they're not driving the right way. You're either a lunatic or you're an idiot. You're going too slow, you're going too, you know what? They're doing the best they can. Right. Instead and, of and that, judge and be divisive, it's, right? why don't we... Feel that empathy, like you said, and it's, it's, it, we got to unite, man. That's what it's all about is coming yeah. together as one and understanding, trying to understand each other more than anything. It's not, he's, he's wrong. She's wrong. It's all right. That's their perspective and trying to open up your mind a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, so hey, yeah, kind of deep, you know, I, I, I remember getting this deep in the locker room when I was sitting around in Seattle, you know, we were talking, who knows what we were talking about, but it wasn't this, but this is good stuff. You know, I, I mean, it. this I is, this is uh, stuff that, uh, you know, I think needs to be said. I think it needs to be said in the, in the light of, you know, what, what are we learning from this lesson? And, you know, and, and there's so many lessons to be learned and it's uh, all about you know, having your faith in God and, and, and trusting that, what's supposed to happen is going to happen and, and learn from it. So, um, well, so getting back to what we're doing. So this week, like I said, we've got a, we've got a great guest, Marcus Ogden. I've, I've listened to him speak a few times. Uh, he's got a, a great message of not only success, but of, of failure. And, and, and how did he learn from it? And it resonates a lot with my personal story. Tim, you're too young to have experienced, I think, too many. <laughs> That's why you're here, though, bro. You know? Come on. <laughs> I need that wisdom. I need that. I'm trying to soak that all in. So give That's it all it. to me, please. That's it. Learn, learn, learn from our mistakes so you don't fall in the trap. But anyhow, so Marcus is going to be a great guest. He's going to be coming up. Um, and uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll have our guest. Anything else you got? Anything else you got for the folks? Uh, keep the face strong. Keep the face strong. We're going to make it through this, guys. That's it. All right. So come back to the locker room on Mission Sports TV. We'll see you soon. All right, today joining us in the locker room is our friend, Mr. Marcus Ogden. Tim, talk to us about him. Marcus, former NFL player, author, success coach, and commentator. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming on, brother. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. Of course. Hey, look, uh, I really appreciate you joining us. I've heard you speak a few times. I've heard you share your story. So I know you have a lot of wisdom that you can give our young guys, our young people uh, that are that are listening. But let's start with the young young Marcus. How did uh, how did faith and athletics play a role in your growing up? 
Well, you know, I was, we were raised by our father and our maternal grandparents. So my grandmother was from Little Rock, Arkansas. Originally, they lived in D.C. almost all their lives, their adult lives. She was big into, you know, faith and to what would Jesus do and to walking that line where, you know, you would try to live a holistic, healthy, faith-driven life. And church is a big part of our life and the Bible and learning how to make decisions based upon what is the most um, – faith the faith driven oriented thing to do and that was always in our life and it was great to have you know a, a father that was like that but more importantly a grandmother who really instilled in us what faith was like and how you if you can live a faith driven life it's only going to help you live a better life all around and it's kind of interesting how both my uh my my wife her father my father-in-law is a pastor who was a pastor for almost 40 years so it's kind of now it's kind of like come full circle how i was raised like that and then now that my uh my wife's father was a pastor it was a great way for me to continue to have that come full circle that's that's great that's a great i grew up much the same way you know and, and having that emphasis tim so Having that, that lifestyle bringing you up, that, that's powerful right there. You know, that sets you on the right track. Tell us about that road on how you got to the NFL. And then once being there, how you balance being a professional athlete with your faith. Well, really for me, I, I went to uh, St. John's College High School, Washington, D.C. Uh, then I went to Howard University and I played there for five years. I was a four-year starter at right tackle. Uh, my redshirt freshman year to my last year of college. And then I got drafted in 2003 by Jack Del Rio. It was his first year as a head coach with the Raven, I'm sorry, with the Jaguars. And uh, it was great. I mean, Jack was awesome. Uh, but I had a lot of teammates who had a faith-driven perspective. One of my mentors uh, with the Jaguars is a good friend of mine today, still Maurice Williams. And he's actually the Jaguars mm -hmm. pastor at this time. He was a second round draft pick, offensive tackle out of Michigan. And had a nice seven, had a nice eight, nine year career. Good player, great guy. You know, he married his college sweetheart. They have five boys today. But it was easy to get caught in the lifestyle of the fast lane, nightlife, drinking, women, all this mm -hmm. stuff. But having a guy like Mo, who kind of was our was my mentor, one of our O-line leaders, kind of take me under his wing, mentor me, give me some guidance. But really importantly, I remember Mo took me to uh, his church, uh, you know, during my rookie uh, OTA season before we had training camp and got me to really get me with his pastor and got me to kind of get some, get a different perspective than just football, glitz and glamour, talk about what really matters, which is life, family, faith. And that was big for me because that was how I learned that even guys in the NFL who make a bunch of money, there's a lot of guys who still understand the importance of the Bible, uh, faith. A lot of guys are very close to the team chaplains. So I'm, I was very excited to see and hear that Big Mo got that position because he's going to bring a lot of value. He brings a lot of value still to this day. He's been there for a couple of years now. He brings a lot of value to the players with the Jaguars. And that's exactly how he helped bring value to me and keep that faith-driven perspective as I was moving down the path as an NFL athlete. Man. Yeah, I, I think you bring up some, some great points uh, because I saw it as well in the locker room and the guys leading the prayer breakout and then on the weekend acting the fool. And, um, you know, it's, if, you, if you're going to talk it, you better walk it because it's going to be either a good influence on a rookie or somebody else that's trying to figure it out or you give them the wrong message, you know, and it uh, – you're really, really fortunate to be uh, to have locked onto somebody that that gave you the right message because there's so many outside influences. But even even beyond the NFL, uh, for the young people that are in high school sports, right, they're trying to do the the right thing, and uh, and there's a lot of negative outside influences that are you know that are going to affect them if they don't choose the right path or the, the hitch their wagon to the to the right people. So I I, I dig that balance. Um, hey, so you have shared. Uh, I've seen this in, uh, in a couple of your interviews, the success that you had post NFL, you know, and, and a lot of guys, you know, they, 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 they struggle, but you, you transitioned and, and launched a very successful construction company, but then ran into some, some difficulties. Do you mind sharing that story? Sure. Uh, after that, after the NFL, I found after about six months of 
drinking and getting and, and again losing that faith because my father passed away a year earlier I uh, a year or so earlier and just I was on the wrong path and after feeling sorry for myself and finally getting off the couch I found a very successful construction business Caden Premier Enterprises we started off in uh, small concrete demolition work and one of my mentors went out of business so it opened up a huge uh, opportunity to do site work, like earth moving, grading, utilities. So we took a calculated risk, got into the business, and had massive success for the first two years in that scope of work. And I became the largest African-American subcontractor in the city of Baltimore and the state of Maryland for two years in the area of site work. But unfortunately, as I had success, again, didn't have any strong mentors, didn't have a strong faith base. Uh, I was still living the life of being out and just being wild, uh, being a very successful. I had just turned 30 uh, business owner, and I was not doing things I should have done. I should have been more humble, more faith-driven. I should have been more into the word, and I wasn't. And as a result, I developed a very um, my way of the highway attitude, demeanor. And as a result of that, I ended up uh, – getting my best employees to kind of you know, not want to be around me and start looking for other jobs and forcing them out. And as a result of that, I lost my best employees. That compiled with doing a job that I spent about two and a half to $3 million in less than 90 days doing extra work that I thought was going to be change order, work I would get paid for, and that work was denied the change order. I had to file a Chapter 7 bankruptcy in 2013 and I lost it all, uh, home, cars, everything. I had my home foreclosed on. I had to let that go. I was so broke, I couldn't even file the bankruptcy. I had to pay off in installments. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, was $3,300 to pay the bankruptcy to get everything discharged. I had 177 creditors and close to $5.5 million of debt that I couldn't even pay $3,300 at the time to protect myself. I paid $400 here, $300 there, $200 here. It took me about six months because I didn't really file until maybe like August, September. It took me almost six months to pay off you know, that payment. And as a result of that, everything else I had was gone. House foreclosed, like I said, in April of uh, 2013. Both cars repossessed in the same day. Uh, mm -hmm. In 2013, both cars were pulled off of the lot when I we had just moved into our new rental property we were staying at. And when I got here, gentlemen, I had $400 to my name. That's it. That's all I had. $400, no credit cards, no help, no savings, no 401k, no nothing, nothing. $400, that was it. And I had to make a decision. And I was working for Merrill Lynch. At the time, I got fired, got to a construction company the next day, was fired five days later. So I was fired two times in the same week. Wow. And the only job I could get was I was doing football training. Dave, you know how it is, you know, private training, all that. That's a toll on your body, but that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, a lot of my clients were starting to play football in August, right? Because I started doing that in June. And by August, a lot of the kids that were training, the training stopped coming around. Because they were in season. So I start losing business, start losing income. I took a job as a custodian. One of my kids' parents owned a janitor business, needed a janitor, needed some help. And I took the job as a custodian, making $8.25 an hour in 2013. Then I had my pivotal moment and said, I got to get out of here. Can't do this anymore. And I ended up just deciding I was going to get my life back. And I created some goals and laid out a plan and, you know, became a speaker and it took me two and a half years to get my first paid job but once I got it I haven't looked back so I've been doing this now full time you know full time since 2018 speaking coaching writing all that but I started in 2013 and I didn't get my first paid job until April of 2016 so I started September 2013 and I didn't get my first paid job until April of 2000, excuse me, uh, April of 2016. So September 2013 to April 2016 was two and a half years of not one paid job for my time. Wow. Wow. That's powerful. Powerful comeback story. And just backing up, I just kind of want to go into it a little bit more. 
sure. I mean, you, you had a, you had success in the NFL, you had a successful business and you, and you lost it all. Um, when you reached that, that point, where were you spiritually with your faith? How, how did you come back and, and gain that momentum and that strength within to, to, to get back and get up off the couch, like you said, and, and put the work back in and rebuild. You know, you, you know, you know what, you know what it is, man, Tim, it's like, I ended up, you know, the pivotal moment was the moment that I said, all right, enough is enough. And at that time, I was angry at God. I was angry at everybody. At God, mm -hmm. man, it didn't matter. I'm like, why did you let me get here? And I realized, and I don't remember, but it was like, I forget exactly what it was as far as like, it was like an epiphany or so, like a voice I heard. And it said, well, Marcus, you have no accountability. Like, mm -hmm. I can't help you if you're not going to take ownership of your own life. Like, you can be mad at me. You could be mad at the world. That's fine. And that's why nobody really cares. I remember my grandfather always used to tell me, I said, Granddad, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine, Marcus. And if I wasn't, who cares anyway? And he's right. Nobody, people don't care about your problems. They have their own. They love you when you are the comeback and you're doing great because they can say they know you or they want to be around you. But when you're at the bottom, no one cares about you at all. So I ended up really finding accountability and saying, okay, if I'm going to get out of here, it's got to start with me. Don't blame your partner. Don't blame man. Don't blame God. Don't blame anybody. You're an adult. And that's exactly what I did. And that's when it got better. I started to see things differently. I stopped being so emotional. I became more cognitive. Uh, I stopped trying to put on a persona that everything was okay. And I started to say, hey, I've made mistakes. I've, made, I've had failures. I lost it all. And I stopped trying to be this perfect person when I say, you know what? No, man, I became a statistic. I filed a bankruptcy like a lot of NFL players did. I, I don't, the circumstance was not the same, maybe, but doesn't matter. It's still the same end result. So I just started taking ownership. And as I started to do that, God started showing me more light. I started having more opportunity. I started saying, okay, I can do this. But I tell you all the time, you can have all the faith in the world, which is phenomenal, but you have to also do the work. Like you said, Dave, you can't just talk the talk one day and then go and then go home and sit on the couch all day and expect God just to have everything show up. There's a saying in the Bible, seek, knock, and go and get. You mm -hmm. can't just will it to happen. You have to actually get off your butt and make it happen. You, you know, I'm... I, so many things are resonating as you shared that. And for me, uh, I, I need to hear these things as affirmation that it's okay because my story so mirrors you that uh, I had a very successful financial planning firm um, in the community, the whitewashed tomb. The appearance was that I had it all figured out. Uh, meanwhile, I was doing all those things the wrong way. And the one word that uh, resonated with me as you were speaking is pride. You have so much pride. Look at what I've done. Look at me. I've been, because yeah, I did. An ex NFL guy. And more better than my NFL career is my business I've built. And I'm number one in the country. Look at me. Look at all the money I give away. Look at all the things I do for the community. Look at me. And I was, meanwhile, just doing things I shouldn't be doing. And I remember praying, going, God, I want to stop doing this. I wish I, I wanted to get back to what I'm doing. You know what he did? He, he just said, you know what, son, you're not going to figure it out. So I'm just going to take everything. He took my business, he took my marriage, he took my house, boat, trailer, four cars. I get it, man, I, exactly. Because I, given what I was blessed with, I was doing the wrong things with it, although outwards, you know, it seemed like I was doing the right thing. And, you know, and then that pivot, and it, it started, I remember walking to the first job at a gym, minimum wage. Mm -hmm. And then and when you lose everything, you know, yeah, go try and buy a car. It's going to be 25% interest, but I, I did that. Yep, uh, made, there. On, made a payment on time every month and, 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 and built up from scratch, you know, and, and now where I was just throwing on away, now I look, okay, well, how much is that versus how much can I buy it for in there? I'm so much more prudent and, but more importantly, and the other word you said, humble. Mm -hmm. And man, if we can't be humble and, and give God praise and glory for everything that we have, you know what? He's probably going to take it again. <laughs> so, yep. you know, you're, yep. we're blessed with this, right? You're blessed with the gift of what you're doing. And, and now you're helping guys navigate things that they don't hopefully 
fall into the trap that, that we both fell into. And it's by doing things like this, right? Giving in the community and, and giving to guys back and, and, and being honest and being humble and say, man, I, I, I was there, but I, I blew it. And, yep. uh, but I'm back. I'm back in, 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 in doing the right thing. I love yep. that perspective from both of you guys. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, and you're then, young, Tim. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and Marcus, going, going into that, what you're doing now, right? You're speaking. You're, you're making an impact. Tell us, tell us more about that, who you're talking to, uh, the, the level of people. Is it just athletes? Is it, is it normal people? Please go into it. It's everybody, man. I started out doing middle school and high school football teams, recs, you know, things like that. And then I advanced to doing some high schools and got to college. And I now speak for everybody. I have, uh, I have 13 Fortune 500 clients I've worked for, like Axe Advisors, the Home Depot, to Liberty Mutual Insurance, Cisco Technologies. Uh, I've really worked hard to develop a very diverse client base from corporate America to universities to sports teams. Uh, the Buffalo Bills are one of my best clients. I work with them with their incoming rookies all the time. I've done work at universities like Bryant University, Babson College, uh, mm -hmm. Arizona State MBA School. I've done things like, you know, community initiatives, you know, YMCA to, to the Boys and Girls Club. So it's all across the board. And I'm all about tailoring the message to mm -hmm. people that I'm speaking to along with the action steps and so and telling parts of my story to people that are trying to help them and I'm trying to help them get from where they are to where they want to be. So my client base is very diverse uh, because, you know, I mean, again, I love talking to, you know, middle school football teams, high school, all that, mm -hmm. but that's not gonna, that's not going to pay the bills right. for the family. Right. So I'll still do that because that's how I started. And I'll never forget where I came from. So I don't, I don't ever mind going to something local like that for uh, local at no cost because that's how I get back. But my right. bigger clients are paying the bills and allowing us to buy the new home we're buying at the end of the month from where I got right. here seven years ago and I had not I pretty much had $400 in my name. That's it. Man. Hey, so, Marcus, do this. Give a, uh, so the majority of the people that are going to be watching this are going to be younger, younger uh, student athletes. Um, younger people uh, share something that uh, that you that you like to share when you do speak to those middle those uh, the, no, the those number students. the number one thing I tell athletes especially young athletes character 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 if you and your character's been on some pillars like trustworthiness reliability mm -hmm. dependability conflict resolution with your team if there is something that comes up with your coaches right it's all about getting your education done before anything else these are things that your character is built off and most importantly be an active listener if you can master the art of having great character at all times it doesn't matter who you are where you are female male white black brown blue it doesn't matter you give yourself the best chance to go where you want to go. If your character is spotty in question or even thought to be not who you say you are, you're, you're done. Because your character is going to be what shines through no matter who you are, where you are, what you do. And it's important that you get that done from a holistic faith perspective because a lot of people need to understand, like we're going through right now this COVID crisis, in times of chaos, if your character shines through, in times of calm waters, people will only have to think if you're going to be somebody that doesn't have the right character. Right. right. Well, especially, you know, who you're listening to and what you're listening to in this influencer society that we live in today. I mean, culture and uh, faith, are, they're, com they're completely backwards, right? Yep. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. People are idolizing people that uh, might not be the best to idolize, we should be idolizing people that have more of a faith perspective, a family perspective. But again, that's not sexy. That's not, you know, that's right. not news. And because that's how our society is, they feed off of people's ability to not be able to be cognitive when they see something. They get emotional, they get anxious, or they get stressed. And that's why you see a lot of news is always, not always, most of the time it's not, it's negative because that sells. People are like, well, right. I got to read, I got to read, I got to read that. Well, you tell somebody who's doing something 
faith driven or proper, eh, I don't know if I want to read that. Like, what's that about? Why I want to read that, right? So right. it's it's very unfortunate that our society drives and sells a lot of negativity than positivity that I think should be expressed. Yep. Yeah. So the fear fear of the unknown, you know, is like anybody leaves with a Bible verse, like, oh, okay, I've already seen that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, know, exactly. you know, but there's there's nothing new in the Bible. <laughs> you know, nope, it's, nope. You know, it's been here for years, and it's not going anywhere. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, it's amazing with all the with all the different translations and the and the ways that the Bible is 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 implemented in um, what they call antiquities, right? It's in the in the thousands, and the next closest is like the Iliad and the Odyssey of eight hundred variations. So you know, I mean, and and, and they, they they just assume, oh yeah, that, that, that's true, right? Those things that have just one or two iterations, uh, they. Don't doubt that something that's got literally thousands and thousands of, of translations and versions. They go, oh, maybe that's not true. I, I don't get it. But anyhow, um, hey, tell everyone how they can find you because we're we're gonna we'll put your we'll put your links up on uh, on the uh, recorded version of this and um, and we'll put your picture up and we'll put some stuff. But tell people uh, how they can find you or or anything that you'd like to offer. Give us the yeah, plug. Give us the plug. plug. They can find me uh, at my website, www.marcus, M-A-R-Q-U-E-S, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N.com. Go there. You can hit any of our icon buttons for Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Connect with us. Shoot us an email, Marcus underscore Ogden at yahoo.com. Get in touch with us. You know, hit us up. And I'll be glad to talk with you, chat with you, and see if we can help you in any way. Just kind of push through any adversity or fear you might be facing at this time to get to your excellence. That's Amen. great. And, and one other thing, anything we didn't ask you, anything else you would like to share? Um, no, this is well, great. Yeah, I mean, we did that good a job? We hit every question? No, nah, man, I, I tell everybody, just understand, you have hmm. to believe it before you can see it. Hmm. If you can believe it and know you can get it done, then it will start to transform itself and transcend itself into what you can actually see with your own eyes. But if you don't believe you're in yourself first, then mm -hmm. it's going to be really hard to see what you want to, to get done because you're not going to have a, a foundation of belief or that inner strength or that inner drive that you know you can get something done. That's awesome. Tim, well, you, have anything, you have anything else that's coming to mind? Otherwise, we're going to let Marcus go. I mean, I, I did want to ask you one quick question, one, one last one. I mean, on the field, we're out there performing. We, you know, it's, it's what we do. We go out there, we put the preparation in. Where did you get that gift of being a speaker? Where, did, where does that come from? Oh, same thing. I worked at it. Yeah, I started with the high schools, middle schools, and, I, and then I hired a coach. And that's why I do now. I coach a lot of people who want to be speakers, get into the big stage, learn how to play on their story, how to create action steps, how to challenge the audience. It took me years then I got with my coach who then elevated me to a higher level. And that's why I started getting the bigger corporate jobs with more consistency uh, and a lot higher paying price point uh, with the big clients uh, on the big stages. Man. Well, like well-spoken appreciate yes. you coming on. Thank you so much for everything and the wisdom that you're dropping on us. Absolutely, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Have a blessed day, my friend. You too. All right. See you guys.